Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to worship this morning at Pilgrim United Church of Christ.
Please join me in the call to celebrate. You have been planted. Our spirit-filled souls have been sent, carried by the wind, wisp, breeze, to find a place to settle in and rest. You have been planted. We must remember the hard work of growth, the breaking, the pulling, the bursting, the leaving behind of everything that has kept us safe. You have been planted. Even after we have emerged from the ground, we will still need rest. We must remember, becoming requires rest. You have been planted. Rest in the keeping of life-giving water. Rest in the nourishment of grace-filled bread. Rest in the presence of the hopeful gardener. Please join me in our opening prayer. Great God, help us to feel your presence when we struggle with our own insignificance. Sure, we cherish the mustard seed and relish in her perseverance, but it is easy to forget that we are more capable than seeds. It is easy for us to become mired in all that we should and could have done. Give us the courage to offer grace to ourselves as readily as we offer it to others. Give us the courage to recognize our own strengths as quickly as we call it out in others. Give us eyes to see how your grace blooms impossibly within our ordinary lives. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. 
Israel exalted at last. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one with the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 34. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise at night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, but he does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. The Parable of the Mustard Seed He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will be used for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in the shade. The use of parables. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Great God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm going to ask you all to please indulge me for a few moments, because this week's text is about gardening. And there are a few things that I can talk about ad nauseum, and you are lucky because gardening happens to be one of them. So I'm going to be a bit vulnerable and a bit personal this week, and I am going to talk about something that I'm trying for the first time not something that I have perfected. A straw bale garden in the infamous ravine. Some of you may remember my ravine from previous sermons. Well, here is another ravine sermon. Okay, it's not actually a sermon about the ravine. It's a sermon about the straw bale garden, which doesn't mean that I'm growing straw in my ravine. It means that I have obtained straw bales and I'm growing things in the straw bales. And, you know, I was told this a couple months ago by another friend who happens to love gardening, and he told me that he heard it works like magic. And I didn't believe him because growing up, I always, always, always grew things in soil because you put seeds in soil and the seed grows. 
But since my soil is about 95% clay and grows nothing but burdock and dames rocket and garlic mustard, I thought, well, I'll give it a shot, at least for one year. So a few weeks ago, I picked up some straw bales from a local farmer. And because I am a Subaru owner, I know that you can haul anything and everything inside of a Subaru. So I decided I was going to haul my straw bales in my Subaru. And I just thought I would share a picture with all of you of me hauling straw bales in my amazing Subaru just for fun. So here's me and my Subaru with one load. I took three loads of straw bales. And I set the straw bales up in the God-blessed ravine. And this is what it looked like. Here's a picture of my backyard with a bunch of straw bales. Funny story, my neighbor thought we were going to have a giant party. Apparently my neighbor doesn't know me that well because I don't really like giant parties. So anyways, I had to condition these straw bales for 12 days with a combination of a lot of water and urea, which I purchased in bulk from the Cedarburg Co-op. And after 12 days, I got to plant things in my straw bales. And this is what it looked like just a few hours after I planted. After I spent almost all of Memorial Day weekend digging holes into my rotted straw bales and dropping plants in a little bit of soil. And after the weekend, I was standing over my straw bale garden, looking very proud, when my dear partner came up and stood beside me and said, is this actually going to work? <laughs> or is this going to be another one of your ridiculous failed attempts? And I said, smiling, still proud of myself, who knows, but it's worth a shot. It could be an epic miracle. That's what I should have said. Instead, I was struck by the same fear my partner had verbalized. Sure, I had been told by a friend who heard that things might grow in straw, that this would work. But I wasn't convinced that it would actually work. Maybe it would have been a miracle. And the day I dug holes into stinky, rotting straw bales, it was a mystery. Because I'm a gardener, and I think that for many people, gardening is one of those significant, tangible moments of mystery in our lives. Many of us every spring fill cups and pots with soil. Or we till small patches of ground and we trust that it'll seed. We will dig a hole with our finger and plop a seed in and we'll water and water and water and the seed will be one that carries hope. Hope for ripe tomatoes or snappy green beans or delightfully crooked, colorful carrots or sweet corn that will snap off straight from the stalk into your hand. Or we have hopes of salsa, or pickles, or marinara sauce, or watermelon that is sweet and juicy, or the taste of pesto grown with our very own hands. All of these hopes are contained in a small seed. And every year, millions of people across this world trust themselves with a seed and the earth, and so we plant. And oftentimes I wonder what keeps us from embracing this mystery in the rest of our lives, especially when it comes to religion. Because one of the places where we have the least amount of mystery happens to be in the church. Because very few people who approach religion or faith or spirituality, call it by whatever name you like, Instead, we approach it rigidly. We have a lot of rules, and then we have more rules, and then we have desired outcomes, and then we have anticipated metrics, and then we're taught to fill our lives with a faith that is written in basic formulaic assumptions. And when we do that, it becomes very little mystery. But I wondered this week as I watched my garden be watered, 
What is faith if it is not first mystery? What is faith if it cannot be encompassed and illustrated in the simple act of digging a hole and placing a seed in darkness, covering it up and whispering, here goes. What if and what is faith if at the end of the day we cannot say, well, is this going to work or it will be an epic fail again? And this extends beyond the simple act of our faith, but to the very kingdom of God that our faith points to. The place where the lion and the lamb lay down together, the place where all children are welcomed, a place where women are healed, a place where women are given voice, a place where women are offered a seat at the table, a place where folks who were once afraid of their identity, afraid of being seen who they really were, come down from the tree like Zacchaeus so that they can be fully seen and fully loved, a place where there's room for all people, even the unmarried pregnant women, a place for all of those who have been hiding in plain sight to come out and be seen and known in the world. I'm not sure what lives inside the seed of your faith, friends, but when I read this passage, I'm reminded that inside all of our seeds should be the kingdom of God. Your faith should be one of the seeds that holds the kingdom. And every morning you have to decide to wake up and plant the seed of that day, to plant yourself right in the field of this world. And remember that no matter how small, how insignificant, how unimportant you happen to believe yourself to be, that it is mustard seeds that Jesus talks about that are scattered across a field that he reminds them once planted and grown, have the ability to offer sanctuary to wildlife, nourishment to the bees, and a haven in hot days to birds from the hot sun. Sure, sure, I hear you. Trust me, I offer this argument to myself. But what if day, what if my day, my work, what if my seed and my life isn't enough for this giant kingdom of God? And what if I fail? Oh, my dears, this is where I'm going to invite you to pause, take a deep breath, and where I'm going to invite you to unbind yourself from a formulaic set of beliefs and invite you to remember that our faith is marked by mystery alone. Not formulas, not facts, not dogmas, but mystery and miracle. And most important, our faith is held in having no idea whatsoever what we're doing, but trusting the words and examples of others, like Jesus, who says and tells the story of how one day someone put a seed in a ground, and Jesus says, trust the process. And then Jesus says, watch, even the smallest seed will grow, and it will grow to great heights, even in the wildest conditions. So, one last personal indulgence. Because we started talking about my freshly planted straw bale, I wanted to offer a photo of my straw bale that was taken on Wednesday of this week. I now have straw bales that are heavy and smell a bit because root systems are now burying themselves deeply into rotted hay, which is causing the sides of some of the bales to grow a whole lot of mushrooms, a whole lot of grass, and softly collapse with the weight of life that is held within them. And I have happy cucumbers. I have content tomatoes. I have a watermelon and some squash that are loving life. I have green beans that are just starting to sprout up from the soil. I have Brussels sprouts and broccoli that are still slightly unsure. And I have cabbage that is trying her best. And when I water, I have birds that dance in the puddles. And I get to watch them, robins and blackbirds and cardinals hop around together, and then the hummingbirds come, 
and then the bees float by, and then the butterflies and the moths float by, and where there was once nothing but weeds, there lives a whole lot of life, life that I was never able to see until I dared to trust the process and plants, until I dared to wonder about failure, to stare it straight in the face, but at the same time, wonder about mystery, wonder about miracles, wonder about seeds. Friends, you are the seeds. And the kingdom is within you. And the kingdom is within reach. May God give us the strength to plant courageously. Foolishness to believe that we might actually make a difference. And the wisdom to understand that we might fail but the gumption to wake up every morning and say, here goes. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the bulb there is a flower In the seed tree in cocoons a hidden promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season something God alone This morning we are going to continue our practice of staff appreciation, and this week we are going to honor and recognize our office manager, Lisa Quick. Lisa, we are so grateful for you and your presence and for your ability to keep some control in this chaos, especially in this last year. You certainly have offered your gifts and your talents to this place, and we honor you deeply, Lisa. So thank you for all of the work that you do on behalf of Pilgrim. And now I'd like to invite us to gather our hearts into a time of prayer. If you are able and willing, I'd like to invite you to share some joys and concerns with those that are around you, or pick up the phone and call a trusted friend later today or tomorrow and share some things that have been on your mind and on your heart. And as we gather our prayers, both that we speak out loud and those that we offer in the quiet of our souls, please remember that God heeds and hears them all. At this time, I'd like to invite all of us, wherever we are, to pray together. Good and gracious God, surely in this past year we have learned that your light burns across this world. Give us the courage to continue to look for your presence among city streets and in our homes and on highways as we make our way down them. Give us hearts to see and know and be aware of your love and your light when we happen upon it, especially in those places that are trying. And this morning we offer prayers for all of those who recover from surgery, for Rachel and Phyllis and for Kathy and for all of the others in our congregation who prepare for surgery. Might you continue to hold all of them, to keep them in this time of uncertainty and of waiting, to keep them in moments of therapy and recovery, to offer them the patience and wisdom that they need to write this chapter with great hope and with great joy. We ask prayers for all of those in our midst that continue to remember beloved family and friends for all of those who have lost beloved family and friends in this season, for markers and anniversaries, for memories that cling so very closely and names that have been inscribed on our hearts. Hold all of your children that grieve closely, great God. Continue to be a rock and a refuge for them. And we offer prayers for all of those that rejoice in the gift of new life, 
who are relishing in the days of this summer, and we ask prayers for all of our families as many of the children in our lives embark on summer vacation, we pray that your cloud of protection fall over them as they make their way into these months. Be with families who travel. Be with people who make their way across countries and across borders until we gather again in the safety of our home and we can rest in your keeping. We offer prayers for all of our graduates at whatever stage of life, as they enter into a new chapter. And as we write days that are ordinary and beautiful at the same time, we pray that we have the courage to find your presence and remember that we are the hands and feet of Christ in this world as we hold fast to the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, I'd like to encourage all of you who received this in an email to pause for a minute and take a look at all of the announcements that we have listed. We have a number of announcements this week, but there is one that I would like to lift up. We here at Pilgrim United Church of Christ are growing our staff team. We are looking for individuals who are interested in working with our youngest pilgrims and children in our Sunday school with our children's ministry team, but also someone to work in conjunction with the children's ministry team and the high school team to serve as our elementary and middle school coordinator. If you are interested in working with kids and think that you have the abilities to serve us in that way, please send me an email, give me a phone call. This is an amazing staff team and we love to work with incredible people. So please contact me if you're interested. And we at Pilgrim are also making the move to provide worship that is live streamed. So if you have interest in learning how to live stream, if you know how to live stream, if you understand social media and the digital world, I would love to talk with you because we have a place for you too, alongside an excellent media team. So those are two of our incredibly exciting opportunities. So I look forward to hearing from some of you. And this morning, we would like to welcome any of you that are worshiping with us for the first time. We're glad that you found us. And this morning, I would like to remind all of you that we here at Pilgrim continue to exist alone by the gifts of our members. So for all of you that have offered gifts, we are incredibly grateful. If you feel moved to give a gift to Pilgrim today, you can send it to the church through the postal service, or you can hop onto our website and donate online. And we are grateful for all of our gifts for surely the biggest, the smallest, and everything in between help us plant the seeds of God's kingdom in this time and in this place. This time, I'd like to invite us to share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. And now let us pray together. Holy One, might we never underestimate our gifts. Help us to imagine that these gifts are like seeds scattered across the field, destined to become rows and rows of sunflowers, always drawn towards your light. In the name of Christ, amen.
And now, dear friends, I pray that every morning we have the courage to wake up, dare to plant our seeds, and say, here goes. And as we plant, remember that we go with the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.